that's what you heard from the bubble dog i've been busting today we are going to talk about sony's brand new camera the sony zv1 now this is the first time for many things with sony uh this is their compact camera i suppose their uh, successor to the rx100 series uh I know YouTube is full of reviews and content already about this, but uh, I recently got this to upgrade for my GoPro as my B camera, my vlogging camera, and uh, today I'm eager to go out and put it through its paces to see what kind of content and images we can get out of this. Uh, this is not going to be an in-depth review, this is going to be more on the field test, putting it through its paces in ordinary hands like me and seeing how I get on with it, uh, sort of a real life test if you like so without further ado let's jump in Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're here in Svaldavald in Hilversum again, uh, in the woods. Um, we're actually out here today because I've finally upgraded my little vlogging camera for my wildlife vlogs, uh, and I've actually uh, upgraded to the Sony ZV-1, uh, every YouTuber's vlogging dream camera by the looks of it on YouTube at the moment. The more I've seen of it, the more I think it could be handy for me just to be that small compact size. I've got so much kit already, so uh, I just wanted something a bit better in low light than my GoPro. Hopefully with this 1.8 um, f-stop and um, one inch sensor, it'll give me a little better performance than my GoPro. Now I've got the uh, full vlog set up with the Sony Bluetooth grip uh, and one of the issues I was thinking about this camera is it's not really wired enough. This is actually with the just the lens stabilization on and not um, cropped in even more with the active which I do want to use because obviously you get the shakes and it takes that out but uh, just testing out the standard at the moment try not to get distracted by the flip screen but I'm very happy we finally have a flip screen and finally we've got an ND filter uh, built into a camera which is an absolute dream um, but yeah so back to the wideness uh, I've actually had a thought of getting a tripod extender a little mini tripod extender uh, and then adapt the 3 8 to the quarter at the bottom and then maybe put the Joby Gorillapod head at the top so then I've still got the Bluetooth controls here um, at my hand but then it gives me that extra reach give me a bit further out hopefully more like this kind of this is me and my arm fully extending but hopefully means I can still hold it and uh, get some wider field of view shots so that's my theory but it's still not arrived yet but I want eager to test it out already so we've just gone with the uh, standard Sony grip the other good thing watch I loved it I've obviously finally got my Shimoda backpack through but it's got a little pocket there and it just the grip just slips right into that so it's really handy um, just to you know quickly pull out when I'm filming with a big camera an animal comes and you know sometimes the most exciting bit is when I'm filming it I want to share that with you so hopefully with this I can quickly take this out and start talking BS to you lot A bit of a quiet morning wildlife uh, kind of terms. Uh, I'm still wandering around. I've seen woodpeckers and nut hatches. But I'm sure you're a bit sick of them by now. This is with uh, active um, steady shots, so with the digital stabilization as well. You see, it's a lot more smoother, uh, but you have got that crop. I'm actually I'm fully, fully extending, uh, so hopefully, with that hack with the extension pod. Um, yeah, that will uh, solve that issue. So far, the autofocus is 
bloody impressive, I have to say. It is sticky. I've never had a camera that can autofocus so good, and it's just from, from a little compact. You know, this is what I expect like an A9 to do, you know, in video. It just does not leave my eye. And I've changed the settings to um, standard and normal. I can't remember. I'll put it in here. Um, but that just means that, you know, it's not going to, when it loses me, it's not going to jump straight away and get that pulsing effect. It should keep locked on to me. And um, when I turn and then come back, hopefully, when it loses my eye, it won't suddenly jump back focus. And that 1.8 uh, creates a nice little look, I think. <laughs> Vogel. Finally, we caught one um, in the stinky lake. Beautiful. Oh, so happy. I was getting a bit, you know, when you don't have any content, you get really tense. And you're like, right, I must. So I'm looking at the screen again. Problem with the ZV1, but the blessing. Um, yeah, you're, you're so stressed. You're like, I have to find something. I have to find something. It's been really quiet morning and then all of a sudden boom I was just looking down and I just saw a kingfisher on a classic branch you normally see them um, and he had a little dip and then come back in the old stinky lake with the uh, Sony V1, see how that active uh, steady shot goes. Again, uh, field of view is quite narrow. Uh, so I was just waiting for the Kingfisher, this lovely old lady with a beautiful uh, border collie, a um, little fluff monster, came and said hello. And uh, she said there was an owl, always on this same tree on a branch. Uh, she gave me very good directions. Oh. Let me pop this ND on. Boom, ND on, loving that. Um, so I'm gonna try and find this owl. Uh, she said, big lane, follow it down to the left. And um, when you get there, you'll see a tree with loads of bird poo all over the uh, bottom. And that's where he uh, roosts. So I don't know what owl it is. Um, she didn't know, but I'm going to walk down, hopefully. It's what I love, you, you, with a camera, as soon as you pull out the camera, everyone wants to know, and sometimes you get some really good tips, uh, especially from dog walkers that walk here every day, and you're more in tune with the forest, so it's really handy. She also told me about the kingfishers, if I wanted to see more, there's a place called Havesland, I think, which is a little village just outside Hilversum, so I've walked quite far. And uh, I believe uh, also there, there's a lot of kingfishers and other animals. Uh, so, plan is, now we've got a plan. Today I just sort of turned up and see what we could film, uh, testing out this new camera really. Again, it's not going to be like a full review, it's just going to be me using it, see how I get on. Um, but yeah, we've got a plan. We're going to go see if we can find the owl. And then uh, later on, we'll walk over to the other bit. See if we can find some kingfishers. Even if this camera's light with this backpack and everything, I'm starting to feel it holding out because I've got to go full extension. It's the only problem, it's this lens. It's not wide enough. Did it lose focus then? No, okay. Right, I'll uh, see you hopefully next time with a beautiful owl.
So <laughs> we found him, uh, the famous tawny owl by the sounds of it, because uh, I've spoken to a few people and they were all like, yeah, oh yeah, he's been around, he comes around every year, same spot apparently. Uh, so he's very used to dog walkers and stuff like that because he's right next to the main path. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the most, I think, the, the most common species of owl uh, across Europe and definitely in England. Um, and they're perfectly adapted for hunting in woodland. You know, those silent wing tips, you know, absolute silent flyers at night, completely nocturnal, hence them brown eyes. You know, normally if it's a yellowy eye, like a short-eared owl, they hunt during the day sometimes. Uh, and the more the dark eye, they're more nocturnal. Uh, so this no uh, tawny owl is completely nocturnal. Um, as you can see, he's just snoozing in this uh, cove of the branch. Looks up every now and again just to see what I'm doing, but goes back to sleep. Not really bothering him. Um, but yeah, beautiful. I uh, walked about 10 miles to get here, walking around in circles trying to find this spot. So I'm glad I've actually found it. Uh, so now I'm just going to spend some time in the owl and then maybe uh, have a little wander around, uh, see if I can find some uh, kingfishers again later on. Because uh, he won't be doing much apart from sleeping at the moment. Uh, maybe occasional yawn and uh, scratch of his face, as lucky as we could get. But he's so beautiful. About the size of a wood pigeon, a lot more rounder. But uh, yeah, ferocious hunters of mice, frogs, insects, anything they can get hands of. I have heard that they don't actually like flying over big bodies of water. So that's why they don't really end up on islands like the Island Man and Ireland. I don't think they've ever uh, colonised. So yeah, they normally just stick to these wood, woodland habitats and perfectly adapted for hunting at night then. Yeah, pretty little thing. Almost looks like a little Winnie the Pooh book here. Uh, using this uh, active uh, crop again now, so I have to proper stretch my arm out just to get that frame that I want. Uh, but overall, highly impressed with this camera, what you can do. Uh, the battery's just come into the last bar now, uh, so, you know, it's lasted six hours, but obviously on and off, I'm not using it that much, but yeah, so I'm pretty impressed with how the battery's coped so far. A bit further down, uh, found a lovely little uh, lake that runs along to a river. Um, I was just hoping to see some kingfishers. I've seen uh, two of them fly past, a pair of them. Um, I managed to get one quick shot because I wasn't really, I was still setting up. Um, and I've seen them flash past once more, one of them. Um, but that's been about it, so I'm just waiting here uh, to see if I can get some last shots of them. So I left the kingfishers, uh, they didn't turn up that much. And, uh, getting late and I've got a night shift tonight. I don't know why I always do this on a night shift night. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go back and uh, take a look at these files from the uh, Sony Z1 and give my final conclusion really.
overall, I was thoroughly impressed with this camera. Uh, there was a lot going for it. The autofocus, like I said, was absolutely amazing on this camera. Uh, it's light, it's compact. It is a bit plasticky and I would be scared about dropping it. I have ordered a screen protector, uh, even though you can fold it away and protect it that way. With this uh, little grip here, it doesn't seem much, but it is a nice little touch, you know. You can get a little pincer grip on it for, uh, you know, doing your movements, even though I have got this grip as well. The autofocus was amazing. I don't have any qualms at all even with touch focus you know you can um, literally touch something on the screen the only time the touch screen really does work on the Sony uh, and then literally you can pan across and you'll just see that box and wherever it, you touch like a, I did it well you can do it on like a swan or something for example and it swims across the lake it will literally cover it across the frame which is very impressive not even my Sony uh, a7R can do that so that was impressive uh, there are a lot of other things going for this camera the flip screen saved me many a times like I said before with if I didn't see that I was overexposed, um, then I couldn't have flipped the ND on, so that was very handy. The ND was brilliant, but it could have been, you could have done with another stop kind of thing. I have bought this magnetic uh, strip here, uh, which you can then add an ND on, um, a, a variable ND, like a 52 millimeter thread ND. So I might use that if it's in really bright conditions. Uh, the audio, I again, was very impressed. I did have a lavalier mic on, you probably saw. That was my Zoom external recorder. But I didn't actually use it in the end because I thought it would be a good test just to hear the, the audio coming out of this thing. And it was really good, really good. Uh, a lot better, again, than my uh, more expensive Sony A7R. Again, you probably add an external mic on that, although my port's broken on mine, so you can't. Um, but that was really impressive, how good... The audio was and picked you up and with this little uh, dead cat on top a dead mouse if you like uh, it really made difference to the wind noise it's a double-edged sword this one it depends what one you like but obviously with a lot of manufacturers if you have the articulated screen you have your ports across here on the side and then that will block the screen whereas Sony changed that and put the ports on the other side so if you do want to exter uh, add a, like an external microphone or any other things that you may want uh, it doesn't get in the way of the screen but there is a but there are people that then like shooting handheld and then it will get in the way of the grip but I suppose if you're doing video you might be on top of a gimbal more or on top of a tripod or something like that but for me, I would much rather that, and it just keeps everything out of the way and clean, uh, which is nice. Uh, the auto exposure, that was another interesting one. I never thought we would have auto ex auto exposing. Um, but uh, yeah, it, again, it was good and bad. Like if you look at this shot here, me walking through these trees, I obviously set the exposure before I walked through and then I went back and walked through the trees. Uh, but then as you see, as I get over this log, it actually then catches my face and recognizes me. And then so it jumps the exposure up to then expose my face when I don't didn't really need it then. So there are times that you might need to remember like me that will have to turn that off. But if you just want easy turn on point and shoot, look at me vlogging, then yeah, it's brilliant. Battery, the battery was quite actually good you know i went i bought a few spares thinking it was going to be draining a lot but i wasn't using it all the time and i think i used about two batteries throughout the day uh the only problem i would have is how much sony charge for their own ones and i bought some uh um Duracell ones instead and these are like 12, 12 euros something or 12, 13 euros uh, and this was like 44 euros so Duracell, yes, please, thank you. The buttons are a nice, uh, I could have done with one more custom button, but overall I got everything I needed to. And I'm quite surprised, if you're used to Sony um, and their menus, it's just ju exactly switching cameras, it's just, it's a lot easier for me. Uh, so yeah, this was nice, you know, everyone moans about the Sony menu system, they are a bit long-winded, but once you <laughs> use it for a while and learn them, it's quite good if the, all your cameras are the same so I quite enjoyed that aspect of it uh, and the big record buttons nice easy to find uh, the scrolling dial it's a bit annoying that you have to do your shutter your ISO and everything on that you could have done with one more 
um, you know, little scroller maybe at the front. That would have been nice. So the things I wasn't really too keen on, one was uh, the battery door. Uh, every time you open it, you need to unscrew this uh, from your tripod mount, which is very annoying. Um, I don't know why they did that. There was obviously probably a reason, but yeah, it's very annoying. And this is very plasticky. I feel like this could break off quite easily. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm very happy they put an ND filter in there, but I'd love to have seen them put an extra stop. Uh, like I said before, I have accessorized it with a magnet one, so then I can add an uh, ND. Um, the other big elephant in the room, if you like, is the lens. Now, it's a fantastic lens for low light, 1.8 in uh, its widest. It's really nice. Uh, but it, it's just not wide enough. Uh, it especially if you're designing something for vlogging it needs to be wider and i hope if they bring out second model they will uh, address that issue uh, but that was the only real issue and that's why i think you need to sort of get some accessories so i have the grip which i really like it's nice to have all these buttons and bluetooth it's just less cables a lot tidier and ergonomically on your hand it's very nice uh, especially with the zoom and you've even got a custom button here and you can lock it um, and yeah that's brilliant but it's not wide enough so again it still hasn't arrived but i'm gonna get that um a tripod to then go a bit higher so I can get that a bit further away. Uh, also, the magnetic um, ND was another accessory I think you might want to consider when uh, getting this if you want to have complete control of what you want to use it for. Obviously, there's no EVF. I don't really miss that because I'm using this mainly only for video. Uh, and when I'm filming with this, I'm just using the flip screen. So... I'm not that bothered about it. I would much rather have a better mic, which looks like that's what Sony did. They sacrificed the EVF and put a better uh, microphone in it. And I agree on that choice. The zoom noise. Now, it's a bit noisy. Uh, but I know you're not going to be doing some slow video zooms on this. I know it's not what it's meant for. Uh, but I just thought I'd bring it up. It is, uh, you know, one of those compact cameras that do make noises. Uh, but apart from that, I had to really, really think about and search for things I didn't really like. The two biggest ones is the lens and this uh, tripod thread. The other ones are just me being picky. Uh, but overall, it was a fantastic camera. And I think a lot of people will get use out of this. I think, you know, even this is not just going to be my B cam, like when I go traveling, going away on holiday, my top down camera, you know, it takes photos and give it to my girlfriend take photos you know it does it all and it's small it's easy you can fit it in your pocket and then you've got something that's 4k capable shoots the same bit rate as this camera 8-bit as well color uh, and the files are pretty much identical to color grade and I think the skin tones and everything the color science is actually better on this newer one especially skin tones looks a lot nicer and quite easy to grade compared to the normal Sony's uh, my color grading's awful but I did find that um, so yeah I hope that color science again moves forward into their other models I'm sure it will um, but yeah overall I can't really complain about this camera it, it's a does it all camera uh, and it fits in your pocket ready to go again festivals anything bosh you can just whip this out and you've got 4K and, you know, HD slow motion as well, at, uh, 120 frames HD and even lower frame rates. I didn't really touch on that, on the frame rates, but um, it's not something I'll probably use it for as much because that's why I have my A camera to then do to slow down wildlife and stuff. Uh, normally this is just going to be for vlogging and just getting those B-roll shots. It was a lot easier not swapping cameras and stuff like that. So it was quite quick and easy and a joy to use overall. The only real issue, if it's a big downside, is the uh, wideness of the lens. I think you can get around that with accessories, but then again, does it defeat the point if you're buying a small compact camera that you can fit in your pocket, if you have to get a grip and then an extension pod, does that defeat the object? But at least it folds up and I can just use it. When I have it on that, I'm using it all day and I can just shove it on the side of my pocket. So yeah, it was a fantastic camera. I really enjoyed using it today. Uh, it made my life a lot easier as well, which is, I think, the main thing I'm going to take out of this because, yeah, I could have bought a bigger camera and have another lens and 
and do all that vlogging that way to make it look nicer. But the picture that comes out of this and for the ease of use and how much I'm going to use it because of how easy it use. If I'm running out the house, I might just pick this up and run out with it because it's that kind of camera. So overall, I think that's what you consider. If you're going to use it that much and it makes you want to pick it up, then it's a good purchase. Thank you for listening to me talk on about this and I hope you enjoyed today and what we saw. Uh, next week, um, I've got a few ideas of trying to find some pine martins. There's some pine martins near me, uh, so that might be my next goal. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you all then. Uh, but in the meantime, peace, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Maybe you won't, but I'll be up in your turf with the full fur all year, bro. And I said, I'm gonna get a half of the town to move. We be doing that in Kalamazoo. I'm gonna be tracking me down with the truth.